My name is Bobby, and today I would like to show you what I believe is the fastest way to get your Epson Scara robot up and running. First things first, you have your robot unboxed, you have it mounted, and you have the e-stop connected to the port in the back. You have your programming cable connected to the PC port in the back, and you have it connected to an outlet. So the robot should be on, you'll see the lights in the front. I'm going to connect via USB and open up the RC Plus software on my computer, which is how Epson is programmed. When the Epson software is opened, you'll see the tip of the day. Click OK. I'm going to create a new project and we will name it YouTube Tutorial because that is the goal of this project. Click Next. I would like an empty project, and I would like to connect via USB because that's what's plugged into the back of the robot. We'll go next. Make sure things look right. Click the finish button. Yeah, looks good. Here you see we have a blank program. On the side you have your program. You have other sets of files, including your robot points, robot one, um, and more things on the side there. But we're connected via USB. Let's verify that by opening up the simulator. Okay, here's a note. The project and controller is blank YouTube. It's not the same as the project in the computer. So when I click yes to open up the simulator, it's going to overwrite whatever is in this controller with what I have on my computer. If you don't want to do that, you need to import the project from the controller to your computer. But in this case, I am okay with overwriting. I'll click yes. And here we go. We have the robot simulator, which is built into the software completely free. You don't have to pay for the software add-on. It comes with the software. And we can see our robot here, see its position. Now, I'm going to go to the robot manager. The SCARA joints can be freed. But first to do that, I see that my emergency stop is on. Let's click a reset. And if I hit my emergency stop, we see the status of it. I'll free that and click reset again. And I would like to free all of the joints. So you may not have heard it, but I heard a little ping. It released the brakes on the robot. Now I can move the robot by hand and see its coordinates in the simulator. This is great if you don't have a robot and you're designing your work cell and you'd like to know what kind of reach you need or what robot space you need to fit in your cell, you can use this. There's a brake release on the top for this quill, the ball screw spline. Here I can move it up and down and I can rotate in the U as well. Common mistake that a lot of people make is they notice that if they twist this ball screw spline, it will go down. But what you do there is you're jogging your U coordinates and eventually you'll reach the end of limit on that U. So let me show you in your, our U degrees right here. If I want to move down a Z and I do this, eventually I'm getting a crazy number in my degrees turned. So rather than doing that, let's bring it back. If I want to move down, let's press this button, move it up and down. And when I move the robot, when the joints are free, notice I grab the base of the robot, a stronger part of the robot. I'm not grabbing it by the quill, trying to move the mass, uh, putting torque on that. Okay, I want to move some points. Move the robot. I want to go to point one, then I want to go to point two. The go statement is a joint motion. So I added P1 and P2 in here. And let's open the run window. Looks like our build was complete with no errors. Let's see what happens when we run. Well, oh, we have an error. Error 7007, specified point number was not defined. Specify a teach point number. Okay. So I know what to do here. I'm going to stop my program. I'll go back to the robot manager where 
most of the action happens. And let's go to jog and teach. So if I keep the robot right here and I look at teach points, I'll notice that all of my point list is currently undefined. So I want to teach a point for P1. Let's teach this point right where the robot is. So let's call it pose one for position one, and I'll teach that. So current position is 108.579 millimeters, 265 and negative 35. Let me look at my points. Look, there we have our data saved for that point. 108, 265, and negative 35. I would like to move to another point now. I want to jog it though this time because maybe I want to be really accurate, move a fraction of a millimeter to get close to my pick position. So I want to jog with X, but I get an error. Cannot execute a motion while the motor is in the off state. All right, I know what to do here. I'm going to go to the control panel, turn the motors on. Ready? Yeah. And you'll see orange light on the top of the robot turns on. And you may not hear it, but I can hear that the motors are on on the robot. Okay, now I'll go back to my jog and teach. I want to jog in X. And I have motion. I can also see in my simulator the path that the robot's taking. And for fun, I would like to jog right above the E stop. Now I have different distances. I can jog continuous, I can jog in a long distance, 10 millimeters, I can jog a medium distance of 1 millimeter, keep moving the robot down, and then once I'm close to the E stop, I can jog in a short distance, which is a tenth of a millimeter. And I can just apply a bit of pressure on the E stop, just for fun. Now that I'm here, I would like to teach point two and I'm going to name it position two. Okay, so I'll go back to my main program. Check it out, I've got my function main, go P1, go P2. Let's see what happens when I run it. The build was complete without any errors. I'm going to click start. And there we go, the robot moved from point one to point two. But, this is not the best practice for doing this. I would like to show you some boilerplate code to bring your code to the next level. I'm going to create a new function called init. It stands for initialization. So at the start of the init initialization function, I would like to reset the robot. That means if there's an error in the robot, it will reset, it will turn the motors off, and it will just bring the robot back to a reset state. If the motors if the motors are off, I'm doing some uh, if statements here. If not motor, then motor on. If the motors are off, I want to turn them on. If power is low, then I want to set the power high. But in this case, since I'm testing points and I'm not sure how my program is going to go, maybe you just started setting it up and you're using a camera to pass coordinate data, it might be a good idea to stay in low power. So I don't want to use this line yet, but I want to save it. So I'll put an apostrophe, and that will make it a comment. And I'll actually keep the power at low. Now another thing I want to clarify is how fast do I want the robot to run. When we first ran, we don't know what it was running. It was a default setting in there. So I would like to set my speed at 50% and you'll see these pop-up windows telling you the speed as an integer, an integer out of a percentage of 100. I want my acceleration, and see we need to enter our acceleration, I'll make that 50%, but look, if I hit enter, this box isn't fully checked, in, or it's red. It means that there's an argument missing. So not only does it want to know how fast it should accelerate, it wants to know how fast you should decelerate the robot. When I hit enter now, we get blue, which shows that it's a valid function. Great. But we're not done yet. Speed and Excel, those functions are only for joint motion 
where the robot is optimizing for speed to go from one place to another. If you're trying to move in a line, the robot moves in a different value of millimeters per second. And that is in the speed s function. So now it's asking for millimeters per second. Let's make that 1250 speed s. And let's do our x cell s as 500 millimeters and our d cell s as 500 millimeters. Great. So if I run this program, what should happen? It should reset, the motor should turn off, it should take some time to get that speed data, the robot should turn back on, and it should move point to point. Well, I must have done something wrong because the motor didn't actually turn off, it stayed on. What I didn't do is in our main program, which we chose to run in our run window, is I didn't call the init prompt function. So I'm going to go into main, call init. And before that, I'm going to print a statement. I do this for debugging. Print calling init function. Dot, dot, dot. And I want to make sure that I got into the init function. So I'm going to print another statement. Resetting the robot. Dot, dot, dot. Now, let's see what happens. I'll run the main function. I could also just run the init if I wanted. But calling init, resetting the robot, and it moved point to point, it came back, and you'll see that we can't stop, pause, or continue because the function is already over. The program ran through main, it ran through init, and then it finished main, and there's nothing more in it no pun intended, in it. There's nothing more in it. But say I want to loop these points because I want to go back and forth from point one to point two repetitively. I'm going to add a do loop. What is a do loop? I'm glad you asked. I'll click within the do and I'm going to click F1 on my keyboard. And here I have all of my do loop statement details. It repeats a block of statements while a condition is true or until a condition becomes true. So you can put a condition, do while blank, and then end the loop, or you could not put a condition and run it forever. Uh, this is nice because you can run it based on inputs. You could run it only while input 5 is on coming from your PLC, something along those lines. So it shows that I need my statements inside the do loop. Close that. I'm going to take my my goals, Control X to cut, Control V to enter them, and I'll just reformat this. I like to tab so that I can see what's inside my loop. And maybe when I get to position one, I'm doing some kind of action. I'm spraying off the part, something like that. I want to wait for five seconds. And I also I like to have a something troubleshooting. Let's print going to P1. Oh, print waiting, waiting. Do that. That's fun. Then we'll print going to P2. Now I'll run this program calling init function, resetting the robot, going to P1, waiting, going to P2.